Hey everyone, Robert Fringo of Doc Sports here with my NFL preseason power rankings countdown. We are already to my number 27 team heading into the 2023 season, the Houston Texans. We will get to the Texans in a second, including a free season win total pick and predictions. Uh, we'll get there in a second. I don't feel like going through the whole spiel by now. If you've watched a bunch of these videos, you kind of already know it. Uh, free $60 in the link below, same as cash. Go to the website, use it for picks from a handicapper and like and subscribe. If you're enjoying these videos, we're, you know, we're counting them down. I got 32 of them. We're counting all the way down to my number one team. So be the first to watch these videos and you know, rock, rock that thumbs up down there if you like what I'm selling. And today I am definitely selling, okay? The Houston Texans at number 27. I am out of step with the rest of the bobblehead media on Houston. I like this team more than a lot of other people do. Now. I say this in the article, it is relative. I like this team relative to its expectations. Do I think that the Houston Texans are gonna win the AFC South and go to the playoffs this year? No, that's not what I'm saying. It's not what I'm predicting here. Although I will say, it happens just about every year in the NFL where some team goes worst to first. Stranger things have happened. What I'm saying is I like the Texans more than the general public I think there is a lot, gonna be a lot of value betting on this team. Not as much value with their season win total, but we'll get to that in a minute. But I like Houston. I know it's a tough sell, but just bear with me. Now, new coach, new offensive and defensive coordinator. They brought in D'Amico Ryans from San Francisco. He bought Bobby Slowick, the offensive coordinator um, from San Francisco. He's gonna be running that Shanahan scheme that's so popular and successful in the NFL. You know, Houston hasn't done anything over the last two years that would make you think that there's any level of competence in this organization, in this franchise, right? They even, they even botched the draft. Made a good pick, get their guy C.J. Stroud, but then they blow it by mortgaging their future for a rebuilding team to get Will Anderson. It's like they couldn't decide which one they wanted and they were afraid of making a mistake, so instead they, they gave up a bunch of picks Moved back into the first round and got Will Anderson. I just didn't work with Davion Clowney. I, I, I just, I don't like that move. But let's get back to the positives. If this team, big caveat on my, on my positivity for Houston. If this team starts Davis Mills at quarterback over CJ Stroud, if they do the right thing, the right thing according to me, according to verifiable data and history. I wrote a full article about it. I've referenced it a few times. Go to Doc Sports, or it, it, the, the link is in this free play um, uh, article that's on Doc Sports website. Uh, the link to my article about rookie quarterbacks in the NFL and how it is the height of stupidity to start them. Rookie quarterbacks should sit for at least the majority of their rookie season, if not all of their rookie season. Are the Texans gonna make this mistake and just throw CJ Stroud out there and throw him to the Wolves? They shouldn't. It would be ridiculous if they did. If they start Davis Mills, they have a chance, especially with their early season schedule. Davis Mills is in his third year as a starter. This is a guy that was thrown to the Wolves as a rookie quarterback because Houston didn't have any other choice. In two years, he suffered the slings and arrows. But I gotta tell you, he's not bad. David, Davis Mills, I'm not sitting here trying to sell you on him as Justin Herbert. I've seen the guy do some things. Being on a bad team with bad coaching in a bad situation with terrible weapons behind a horrible offensive line, Davis Mills has done some things, okay? He has started to develop. I think they're in a good place with him. He's gonna be in his third year. Why not start the season with Mills? If they do that, I think that there's some competence here. They invested heavily on the offensive line in the offseason. Damian Pierce was excellent as a rookie until he got hurt. I think he's going to be a very, very good running back. He's, again, he's playing in that Shanahan system that has just pumped out 1,000-yard rushers. I think Houston's going to be able to run the ball a little bit. Their receiving core is weak. I 100% grant you that. They invested in Dalton Schultz, gave him a big contract to lure him away from the Cowboys. Again, in that Shanahan offense, a tight end is a very key position. You know, he could, he could serve as kind of a security blanket for, for one of the two quarterbacks who's ever in there. I think they'll move the ball a little bit. Another reason I kind of like this team is 
all of the resources that they have thrown into their defense. D'Amico Ryan's a defensive guy. He's coming from that San Francisco scheme that's been number one in the NFL uh, a couple times in the last few years. And look, they, who'd they bring in? I got the list right here, the talent they brought in. Sheldon Rankins, Denzel Perryman, Steven Nelson, Jimmy Ward, Jerry Hughes, Corey Littleton, Chase Winovich, Hassan Ridgeway, Shaquille Griffin. It's nine guys that have been starters, effective players, some pro bowlers in this league. Mix that in with what they already have. In the secondary, you had, you had Jalen Petrie and, and Derek Stingley, who were young, who were rookies last year, but who played well, who did some things. They also have Desmond King, another guy back there. That's, that's 12 names I've just given you, okay, on top of Willie Anderson, the rookie, on top of a couple of the starters that they, that they retain. They're going to have... A, the skeleton of a good defense. And if D'Amico Ryans can bring that scheme and get something out of that, I'm not saying they're going to be the San Francisco 49ers. They don't have that type of talent. There's a lot of guys that can play in the NFL on that defense. They can have a good defense. If they, they can have a top half of the NFL type defense. And if they're there, and if they do run the ball effectively on offense, Pierce is a guy I think can have a breakout year with an improved offensive line. That doesn't strike me as one of the worst teams in football. Again, comes back to the quarterback. You go with the rookie quarterback, all that goes out the window because he's going to be a turnover machine. The game's too fast for him. He's not going to be ready for it. It's, it's going to be a mess. He'll have some big games, but for the most part, rookie quarterbacks are terrible. Even guys who end up being Hall of Fame quarterbacks, Pro Bowl quarterbacks, they're terrible as rookies. C.J. Stroud's going to be terrible if he starts. All bets are off if they go with Stroud. If they go with Davis Mills, if they commit to running the ball, if these defenders stay healthy, I think they could have one of the best secondaries in the, in the AFC. That's, that's, that's no joke. All right? Improved pass rush. Improved against the run. You know, the, the, they'll have a little bit more energy. D'Amico Ryans has a good... Everyone that talks about him talks about the energy, the vibe. They play in the worst division in football. There's some wins out there to be had. The Colts stink. The Titans I have ranked behind Houston. Nobody in the country, okay, no NFL prognosticators that I see have Houston ahead of Tennessee. And that's because I like the younger talent, I like the prospects, I like the vibe more with this Houston team heading into the season than I do a team like the Tennessee Titans. So there, there's some wins to be had there. I think that this team is going to be very competitive this year. I think they're gonna do very well against the spread. And again, you heard it here first, because nobody is out there selling the Houston Texans right now. Nobody, I am. I like the Texans. Their season win total moved from five and a half to six and a half. It moved a full game. You don't see that a lot with season win totals. Okay, you don't, at, at this stage of the summer, you don't see sports books, especially low tier, bad, not public teams. You know, it's not like they went out and brought back DeAndre Hopkins or made some big splashy move that will, that will shift the odds. Or if there's a big injury or something like that, that might shift the odds, no. Move from five and a half to six and a half. That tells me that a lot of sharp money sees what I see. Sees that the Texans are gonna be a little bit better than, than people think. At five and a half, a lot of value. Love their season win total over. Six and a half, not as much value. Don't love it, still like it. I would play them over, okay? I would be ra rather be wrong on the opposite side of the public, which is already just penciled in that Houston's gonna stink. They're gonna be one of the three worst teams. They're gonna pick in the top five of the draft. They're a non-entity. I look at this roster. We don't know what rookie coaches can, can go either way. I, I understand that. But I look at this roster. I just look at the vibe of this team. And, and I look at where they're at relative to their expectations. And I see value. And that's what betting in the NFL is all about, right? It's about finding value. I think there's some there with the Houston Texans. I like their season win total over, I know, after, after a bunch of unders to start this, this series, a bunch of teams I don't like and that I've picked to go under their season win total, this is uh, the rare team that I, that I think could go over. Uh, so that's how I'm playing Houston this year. So that's it. Be sure to check back tomorrow for my number 26 team and the rest of them as I count down to, to number one of my NFL power rankings. We're getting close to that season, people. In the meantime, carpe diem and good luck.